You will pour out everything it takes to make it your agenda and to fulfill your counsel. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you for the wedding and adversity, dear Lord God, of Mommy Buki and my dear brother Wally. I ask you, Father, that you will bless them. <laughs> Lord, I declare these ones will be much more, much more. They're already fruitful already. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, they're already fruitful already. But I ask, Father, in every other facet of their life, you make them much more exceedingly fruitful. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus said the word. He said, in the word of the Lord, it is God's word. He said, be fruitful and multiply. In the name of Jesus, it's not my word. I ask that this word will become flesh concerning this, my beloved family, that, Lord, they will be exceedingly much more fruitful and multiply. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, as we go to your word, I ask, Father, that your word will be quick again and that will profit through your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a mother's instruction. We're going to be fast because of our time. Thank you, Brother Ty, for bringing the word, by the way. I really appreciate it. Jesus' mother gave an instruction. And today, you know, I, I want us to thank the mothers much more. I hopefully before the end of the meeting, we'll still be able to thank them. Uh, Sister Jazz, Mommy Buki, my wife, uh, and my dear sister. Oh, what's your gift? Can you please oh, give our mother's gift? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 you know, as uh, I was talking with, I didn't know what, whom I was talking with yesterday, I was talking about Mother's Day. And so the Lord lit up in my heart, said, that's the message for today. Uh, what, what, well, let's look at a critical mother. Uh, what the role of a mother is. And as I was going through this message, you know, I can't but thank God for my wife and all the mothers in our lives, you know. And let's, let's look at Jesus' mother, what, what happened. Two days later, there was a wedding in the town of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. <laughs> when the wine had given out, Jesus' mother said to him, They are out of wine. Madam. What do you have to do with this? My time has not yet come. Do whatever he tells you. The Jews have rules about ritual washing, and for this purpose six stone water jars were there, each one large enough to hold between 20 and 30 gallons. Fill these jars with water. <laughs> they filled them to the brim. Now draw some water out and take it to the man in charge of the feast. servants who had drawn out the water knew. So he called the bridegroom. 
Everyone else serves the best wine first. And after the guests have drunk a lot, he serves the ordinary wine. But you have kept the best wine until now. Jesus performed this first miracle in Cana in Galilee. There he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus and his mother, brothers and disciples went to Capernaum and stayed there a few days. Yeah, so we'll read, we'll read the scripture real quick and then we'll begin to go into the word. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Always invite Jesus to your wedding, by the way. <laughs> you, you, you may need some wine in that wedding. <laughs> yeah, Jesus is already in the marriage of Brother Wally and Bumibuki, but afresh, Jesus is coming in. <laughs> And they ran out of wine. The mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, to, to her Woman, what does, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to himself, Whatsoever he says to you, do it. Can you see? Here you, you find a situation in which uh, mother son relationship. The mother is at the wedding. Jesus was also at the wedding. Jesus was just an invited guest. But God used the opportunity of that wedding and what happened in there to teach us a lot of biblical concepts as are today. Mothers will always be mother. Mary and Jesus Mary was concerned that the people had no wine. They had wine before, the couple, the ceremony had no longer wine. And Mary went to meet Jesus, as if Jesus is a, uh, is a uh, who are those people who make brew? <laughs> as if Jesus is, has a company to produce wine. <laughs> As a brewery or bartender. Jesus was none of that. Jesus was none of that. But mothers will always be mother. Take other people's concern and bring it to their son. Mothers does that. Oh, that family needs something. And Jesus looked into his mother's eyes and said, my hour has not yet come. But despite that, Jesus still stood up for his mother. What a beloved son. Hey, mom, according to God's agenda and calendar, I'm not yet ready to start performing and showing off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not a bartender. <laughs> But Jesus' mother, one of the things we're going to go to into the depth, Jesus' mother knew something about his son. He had gotten some encounters between God and himself and knew something about his son, Jesus, that he had to go and meet him when the wine had run out in a party and the couples are about to get disgrace. Because he was invited with his disciples. Remember, Jesus went there, Mary, with other family members of Jesus, other kids of Mary. Why didn't Mary go meet them, other people other than Jesus, and go and bring the same concern that the wine is run out to them? Because Mary knew they can do nothing. <laughs> Only Jesus. Can do it. Jesus is the star and was still the star of the family. 
Oh, you wonder, oh, why is my mother always calling me? We have five siblings, always call my four. It's because God has made you a unique person in your family. They always call me. Yes, so they call Jesus. Jesus told his mother, Mother, my hour has not yet come. But looked into the eyes of his mother and stood up for his mother. How many children today can stand up for their mom? Because mother will always be mother. Mothers will come to you when they know the concern is not yours. You're not the bride, neither are you the bridegroom. You didn't invite other people for the party. But mothers are always concerned about other people. And they bring it to you. Now there were six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 to 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast, and they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and he knew where it came from, but the servants who had done the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And, and he said to him, every man at the beginning set out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk than the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of science Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed him. Anything Jesus touches is such a wonderful thing. The wine Jesus brewed was way better than the wine that the bridegroom and the bright heart. The first lesson, whatever Jesus says, let's do it. That's what the mother said to the servant, whatever he says to you, do it. Look at. Jesus said to them, fill the water pot with water and they fill it up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. One thing I want us to note here is when Mary and Jesus had that encounter, what did Mary do? He looked at the servants and he told them what? Whatever he says to you, do it. Let's repeat it. Whatever he says to you, do it. that Jesus was going to do something. But prepare the servant. Please don't argue with him. Don't ask whether I make sense or no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Whatsoever he tells you to do, just do it. And I believe that the first lesson God is telling each and every one of us today, including me, what is Jesus telling you to do? And I put it in there. Sometimes God's instructions might make no sense. Might make no sense. Okay, let's look at what Jesus told them to do. Six pots of water. Told the servants filled with water. After it's all filled, draw. Does it make a sense? Is that the way you talk? Turn water to wine? <laughs> Does it make any literal sense? I'm pour it in there. I make some juice, <laughs> some concentrates, fermentation. fermentation. Jesus knows best. But what the Lord is telling us as a church and as a people in this place, what is Jesus telling you to do in your personal life, in your corporate life? Let's do it. And he took a mother, a mother, not 
not even Jesus himself. Remember, that word was not spoken by Jesus himself. It was Jesus' mom who revealed the secret. I know my son. I know God's dealing with my son. He's such a unique son. Something is weird about him for the positive. <laughs> but whatever he tells you to do, just do. They got a wine that was better. Amen. What caused Jesus' mother to beckon on Jesus for help and to believe Jesus can help? <laughs> Anybody wants to answer? Mothers know their children. Uh, yes, you're correct. Mothers know their children. He knows their children. Yes, you are correct. Is a correct answer? What God told her about him. Yeah. That's the thing. Mary had had so much encounter with God about Jesus that Mary himself knows this guy is weird positively. I don't know for what, but it's not an ordinary son. <laughs> so a mother in tune with God about his son, that's what I'm encouraging all the mothers here to, to do, and mothers to be. Shall you Mothers indeed have an encounter with God about your children? No. If I may say honestly, based on what I have gone through in these scriptures and now the other slides we're going to look at, God is depending a lot on mothers. Sometimes I think God depends a lot more on mothers than we fathers. Because We'll see one of the fathers who suck up before we finished. Jesus' mother have gotten so much encounter with God and revelation about his son Jesus. It's just a mother in tune with God from day one. And well, let's see day one. Let's see how it started. There was a young girl living in Nazareth who was promised in marriage to a man named Joseph. Her name was Mary. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. But I am a virgin. How can this be? The Holy Spirit will come, and God's power will overshadow you. The child you bear will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said. Can you see that encounter? What did Mary say at the end of the encounter? Let it happen to me. Let's repeat it again. Sister Jess. God bless you. All of you are correct. I pray that our mothers can receive God's word on behalf of their children. Mm -hmm. 
Just imagine the first heavenly encounter that Mary is going to have. Mary passed it. I pray mothers can pass encounters God will have with us concerning our children. And this was prelude before Jesus came. But the encounter came to Mary. Just let's imagine. He started saying, the only question he said was clarification. It was not, it wasn't argument. Do you agree? So, but I'm imagining, I don't know no man. How would this happen? Just what a clarification. How many mothers today are hugging with God when God gives you a word concerning your child? Instead of just having clarifications, they will roll out so many words. Why shouldn't be? Mary accepted and passed the first heavenly visit. Let it be unto me according to your word. That was the basis of that, the basis of that visitation today brought forth the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't, want to, I don't want to think proxy the other way around. What if Eve Mary did not accept the visitation? What if Eve Mary said, no, it can't happen to me? Ah. Uh, what if Eve Mary had guilt with the process? Mothers who get encounter with God, they, they and let's see further. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrayed to a man who was named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, he will receive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Amen. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Amen. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? Only clarification. God is not mad in you asking for clarification. How can it be, Lord? Look at what the angel answered. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the eyes will overshadow you. There also, the only one who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is not a six month for her who has called him barren. For with God, nothing is possible. Then Mary said, then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. That is the best response. The mothers can accept God's word concerning their child, either yet unborn or the ones that are still alive, to hold on to God. Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Concerning my son, A, let it be to me according to your word. Concerning my daughter, B, let it be to me according to your word. Amen. Concerning my daughter, C, let it be to me according to your word. God needed Mary to be in that position so Jesus can come forth. Whenever and never God will begin to do something first, he will send his word. You know, we went to Israel, you know, so I, I took some pictures of us in Nazareth. And supposedly these are some of the places where they claim that Mary had an encounter with the angel. They don't know the exact spot, but in and around the area. Next one. So these are all old, old areas. You see that's a new building structure, and you can see stuff, old structures underneath that they build upon, those hold areas as at that time. Now new structures are on top of it. Next one. Yeah, this is a little chapel there. Uh, next one. Uh, Nazareth. Next one. Yeah, the little chapel. Some other people came. My wife went into this chapel, went all over the place. I didn't know whether she was looking for the angel. <laughs> For the angel Gabriel, but I just stood outside. <laughs> Next one. 
<laughs> we took some pictures in front of the place. <laughs> Finally, I found her. She's <laughs> looking for Angel Gabriel. Where's Angel? <laughs> Next one. <laughs> so, lesson three God's perspective of Mary should be embraced by all mothers. I want us to look at what, how did God see Mary? How did God see Mary as a mother? And I want every mother's heir to adopt that from today. Because these words were not only unique for Mary, it's unique for all the women. And it's unique particularly of God's love for each and every one of us. God's same love for us just as the way he loved Jesus Christ. Your own child might have not come from the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, but God still gave the seed. Now let's look at how God saw Mary. So again, God sent his word first, and when we accept it, it becomes a reality. That's what happened to Mary. God sent his word, and Jesus came forth. Next one. The first thing, how God saw Mary, that the angel declared, rejoice, highly favored one. Mommy Buki, my wife, all the women to be, my dear sister, Mommy Jazz, see yourself in that perspective. And the young ladies. Rejoice. You are highly favored. Amen. Hello? Amen. The way God sees you is that God is seeing you as highly favored woman. Amen. Highly favored. If your mother is alive, see her as highly favored. I've lost mine. I'm highly favored. <laughs> That's the way God saw Mary. But what was Mary then? Just a virgin girl, virgin lady. And when they gave all these words to Mary, Mary did not argue. If Mary looked at the circumstances where she was then, she would think, oh, highly favored, living in this small place. That's how God saw Mary. And I want you to see yourself the way God sees you, not the circumstances or the physical situation you find yourself now. For all the women in this church, rejoice for your highly favored. Amen. Hey, pastor, are you mocking us? No, I'm not. Amen. You need to take in the word, and Amen. then the word become, it becomes Amen. a reality. The next one. He said, the Lord is with you. Amen. The Lord is with you. You are not alone. Amen. Look at it again. He said, blessed are you Amen. among women. Now after I read through this passage, I said, you know what, I'm going to be using these scriptures to pray for my wife Amen. and for my daughter heritage. <laughs> and for every woman in this church. Amen. Because that's the way God sees you. I don't care how you see yourself. Amen. God doesn't lie. The angel didn't come to lie. Amen. When God, the angel was introduced to Mary, he said, you're highly favored. Amen. The Lord is with you. I said, blessed are you among women. I said, Pastor, why? It was only said to Mary alone, and Mary brought Jesus. Yes, if the same love God has for Jesus, he has for us, then the same goes with you, the mother, Amen. that God has declared the word. Look at what he said. Do not be afraid, for you have, again, repeating it, for you have found favor before God. Found favor before God. Are they? You have found favor before God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
the, as, the, as we're speaking, the Lord is speaking to me. Before our meeting in July, within two months, God will visit all the women in this church. Amen. You will find an unusual favor before God. It's according to me, some has to do with work. Some has to do with opportunities. Amen. But you will witness unusual favor before God. Amen. <laughs> and lastly, he said the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's the theme of the conversion. Amen. I'm expecting that after today's service, all the women in this church will have a unique visitation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Fresh baptism of fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Spirit visitation that makes things to happen in your life. No? You become pregnant with ideas, not with another Jesus. <laughs> but you, be, you become pregnant with ideas. Do you know what that means? They can't solve the problem at work, they will come to you because you just have this unique knowledge. That's what happens when the Holy Ghost comes afresh and anew. So I want everyone here, particularly the women in this church, young and those who have given to children who are wives, to see that this is the way God sees you. I don't care how your husband talks to you or how you see yourself. But this is how God sees you. Amen. Amen. The very first visit. Look at the declarations. So I expect the woman to wake up tomorrow morning and begin to walk in their room and say, I am highly favored. I'm the, the Lord is with me. Amen. I'm the blessed of the Lord. I'm blessed among women. You're blessed among women. Do you know what that means? Blessed among women? Blessed are, do you know what it means? Before they bless other women, you pick the blessing first. Hallelujah. That's what it means. When it's only one available, you get it. That's what that means. Because that's the way God sees you. Until you're able to accept the way God sees you and walk in it, it does not profit you. Usually, God sends his word first. And when you accept it, the word will become a reality. Look at Hebrews 4, 1 to 3. Therefore since, there's a remains, uh, therefore, since a promise remains of entering Israel, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as it was preached to them. But the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had them. For we who have believed to do enter that rest, as he has said. See, many people come to church. Go to the next slide. And I put it in here. Many people come to church. They focus on the reproach of the church and the post of their pastor. They won't focus on the word of God that God is releasing. Amen. Amen. You know what? As we were praying in the morning here, and I was talking, praying about Jesus Christ being the church, anybody that stands here, God is going to work with you. It's not about me. Because God cares about his church. Anytime they institute a church in a place, the heavens mark it down. And that church becomes notable before God. And God watches over it day and night, whosoever the pastor is. And for every church, God has a word every moment for the people in the church because God knows the people who are in the church. And when the word comes, you don't take it, you don't mix it with faith, you will perish in church. Because the word has come several times, but you never use the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word has come several times, but you never use the word. Do you understand? You never accepted the word for the word to bring you profit. Anytime the word of God comes, it always accepts it. I remember my wife shared a testimony. 
something very significant in her career. She was going for a, a, a program at some point, and we were attending one church at that time. And as the pastor was running up in the church, the pastor declared the word of favor and blessings, and my wife held on to that word. She held on to the word. And after that, it was a testimony afterwards. Whosoever is talking here, when the word of God is released, take it. Let it mix with faith in your heart. Either I'm so black like a ham that I'm talking, or so white as black. <laughs> <laughs> Whosoever the Lord is put here at any Sunday to release the word, believe it. There are some people who are in church for several years. All they think about that church is the problem of that church. So when they are ministering, they don't hear the word of God at all because they always think, oh, the fan is not working. The shoe is not. The, the, the. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Take the word. Be simple, short. The word for the day. God knows you need it tomorrow. That's why he's giving it today. And let it mix with faith in your heart. Then there will be profitability. Mary was just there. Did he argue? He said, let it be to me according to your word. What happened? Pregnancy came. The word will come first before the manifestation. And if you don't take the word and hold on with faith in your heart, then you can't profit. The Bible says the word of God is unto profit. Next one. So the perspective, uh, I will rush through this. Uh, the perspective of a mother was very, Mary's perspective to God, very critical. We'll go to the next one. Now, that's how God saw Mary that we talked about. Now, let us see. We've talked about it, but I want to lay emphasis on it. Let us see how Mary responded back to God. Do you understand now? Good. We've talked about it, but I want to go a little deeper. Mary, look at what she said. Mary saw herself as God's maid servant. Amen. How many mothers can say that in this church? Amen. You know what a maid servant is? I have no choice. I have no choice, God. You're my boss. If you tell me to lead worship, I will. If you tell me to visit people, I will. If you tell me to read my Bible, I will. If you tell me to give my tithe and offering, I will. If you help me to do evangelism, I will. That was Mary's perspective to God. I am your maid servant, though. Whatever you want. That which is your command. How many mothers today can say that in the street of America? When people are saying, he has my right to have my right. He has his right to have my right. No, it doesn't work with that God that way. It's not about your right. Mary did not lose say any right before God. He said, made servant. Go to the next one. I'll rush it now because of our time. Look at what she said. Then Mary said, behold, let's read it together. Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Who taught her to do so? So if God sees me this way, this is my response back, God. I am your maid servant. I am your maid servant. I'm ready to serve you all my life. I'm ready to give all my all. That tie into the word God sent you, brother, tie to us to give all our all. I'm your maid servant, Lord. If you see me as highly favored and you are with me, I'll let you know, I'm your servant too. Let's go on course. How many mothers can say that today? How many wives can say that today, that they're God's maid servant within the church? How many people won't have to argue with God? Look at here. And I put it in here. Hey, may God have mercy on we father, so. <laughs> Let's see an example here of somebody who responded when God said, look at Zacharias. Next slide. See, the same experience that Zacharias had. Who knows Zacharias here? You know Zacharias? You know Zacharias? You know Zacharias? Just father. <laughs> <Don't> father. <laughs> May God help fathers. Amen. Say amen. amen. May God help fathers. 
Amen. Look at what happened here. Same express. Let's see. And Zachariah said to the angel, the angel visited Zacharias. They had the same more or less about that. Look at And Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? Look at The angel gave, spoke to Zacharias. Zacharias said, how shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife is all advanced in age. And look at what the angel said. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you this glad tidings. But behold, you will be moved and not be able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words which were fulfilled in their own time. Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. Zacharias complained. <laughs> uh, the angel said, you know what? We want these things to be accomplished because you will doubt us. Your mouth will go and say negative. Mm. They knock out his mouth. <laughs> Same angel. <laughs> Same angel. The other angel left. He left. After Mary had already said it, he said, let him be according to your word. No argument. The angel left. But for Zechariah, I said, this one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> we have to meet this guy. The guy, this guy will spoil our eternal purpose. Boom. <laughs> For that time, please, because of our time. Let's, okay, say, say what you want to say. Just like God, he silenced their unbelief. Exactly. In other people's lives, God silenced the next one. <laughs> Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife is well advanced. Angel made him moot. Similar encounter. First heavenly visit. Two different people. Mary. Look at what Mary said. My mate's heaven to. Let it be unto me <laughs> according to your word. Angel left satisfied. No argument. May God help man. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> if we properly handle God's word sent to us very well, it's going to profit us. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable. The scripture is profitable. You are meant to hear God's word, believe it with faith, and get a profit from it. That's the way God put his word, so we can get a profit from it. Next one, so we can wrap it up. And I'm going to put, wrap up with this slide, that our mother should adopt the, the same thing that Mary did. That our mother has to adopt to be God's maid servant. And to have faith in what God would tell them. How many women here today can say, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. That's really what we need. Our mothers and our wives are critical to our children. Jesus came forth through the obedience of Mary. When the heaven had finished the assignment, they visited Mary. And Mary was ready as a maid servant, not arguing with the angel, just like Zechariah did. And let it be unto me, according to your word. That is the word I want our mothers to adopt going forward. See yourself the way God sees you. Be God's maid servant. Say, God, let it be unto me according to your word. Don't argue with the word. And you will see how many ways God will bring your children to shore. God brought Jesus to shore. That's why when mothers pray, miracles happen in the life of the children. Let's pray. Blake, go back to the slide where we talked about God saw women. Not, not, go keep going back. ABC, the ABC slide. That, this one. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us today. And thank you for speaking to our wives and to the mothers. And Lord, thank you because your scripture has made it clear the way you see our wives and our mothers. Father, I'm affirming this scripture today in the life of every wife, mother in this church and those that are connected to this church. Father, I affirm this scripture today that they are highly favored. I affirm that you are with them. 
I found that they are blessed among women. I have found that they, they have found favor with you. I have found that the Holy Ghost will overshadow them. And Lord, within the next two months, I ask for the miraculous and the abundance in their life. Breakthroughs and blessings they have never, never witnessed before. Dear Lord, please do in their life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As we go this week, Father, please go before us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, go before us this week. Go before us this week. I declare your blessings upon everyone that belongs to this assembly. <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare everyone that belongs to this assembly will be covered by the blood of the Lamb. No evil shall befall us. No plague will come near us. The Lord God will go before each and every one of us this week. The Lord God will fight for us. The Lord God will carry us in his wings. The Lord God will honor us. He will let lines fall for us in pleasant places where we have a goodly heritage. This week, everyone that belongs to this assembly will be highly favored will be blessed. No man will be able to stand before us all the days of our life. I declare the blessings of God upon the people of God. I declare the blessings of God upon this church. Wherever everyone that belongs to this assembly turn to, or anybody connected with us, they will be favored. Closed doors will be open. There will be fruitfulness. There will be multiplication. I declare it in the name of the God of Israel. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a glorious week. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm.